morning. This is uh, Stuart Cordy from Florida DOT Surveying and Mapping Office, uh, working the geographic mapping section. And today we're going to go over how to access the Aero Photo Archive Collection. Image Services is the custodian of all the historical aerial photography for the department. And our archive goes back to the 50s. Uh, we also have some U.S. Department of Agriculture aerials that go back to the 40s. And we also uh, just created a aerial base map of the entire state that is uh, accessible through the web mapping service, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Okay, to uh, the easiest way to get started with this is go out to FDOT's main page and up at the top under maps and data, if you click on that, and then under data is a link to aerial photography, and that would be the quickest way to uh, actually get to our site. Uh, you can also go through the offices and go under surveying and mapping office. Uh, what I'd like to start off with here is kind of start off backwards, and at the very bottom under our customer service, we have some important information here that you can access. The first one is our frequently asked questions. We have a bunch of different questions in there uh, that can help you and give you information about the archive and how to use it with CAD applications and various viewers. Uh, the next thing is the a application, which is Aerial Photo Lookup System. It does require a login. And then we also have, because we use Mr. Sid images, we do have various Mr. Sid viewers that you can look at, uh, Mr. Sid images. And they do, Mr. Sid images, you know, do come into AutoCAD and MicroStation without any problems. But this is a list and it tells you what kind of cost there is and some of the uh, functions that you can do with those viewers. On frequently asked questions, the I say again, there's a, a bunch of different questions. A couple of things that I would like to point out is why does my image open correctly in CAD software? Uh, this is probably our largest question that we have, especially with MicroStation users. They will get the imagery and they will bring it in, and the image will be off, usually up in the upper right hand corner. And biggest thing with that is the on the preferences, the raster settings for uh, rasters. And right here we have a user guide. And if you open the user guide, uh, MicroStation inserts incorrectly. Basically, all it is is MicroStation defaults to metric. So these units will always be in metric. And all you basically have to do is change the metric to feet, and the images should come in properly. I also suggest because most of the images will have a world file, which is a auxiliary file that gives coordinates to an image. Uh, so with that, you want to make sure you check on the user sister file, which is reference to the world file. So you have the sister file checked on. You want your units to be one and your feet and this to be feet instead of metric. Once you do that, you should have no problem bringing in aerials into MicroStation. The other thing we have is with the use of AutoCAD, we also have created an AutoCAD user's guide. And in this user's guide, it covers several things talks about assigning coordinate systems, talks about adding your raster files, and then as mentioned earlier, there's the process for adding the our base map to the web map service or WMS. So those are two documents that you'd want to uh, refer back to whenever you have any questions. Okay, so going back also, on this same page, we have our various contact information. If 
case you want to contact us, we do have our own email address, image services at dot.state.fl.us that uh, you can email us directly. The next thing I'd like to cover is two lists that we have. One is a map and one is a photo index list. The most current aerials is a map of Florida and what we do with this is we put the latest greatest aerials that we have on the map and as you can see this state is primarily three different colors. And the reason that is is the state is flown in three year cycles. The Panhandle area and then Central Florida was flown this uh, winter and then well, actually I'll take that back. Central Florida was flown this past year and this particular winter we're flying the uh, the southeast is being collected. So if you want to find out what the latest aerial photography is throughout the state you can look at this map. Uh, it tells you the county and it also tells you what year that data set was acquired in. And then this map changes as we get new data sets in and we try to have it all up to date by the fall of this year. The other list that's very important is this photo index list. With this photo index list, it's listed by county, and then we have three groups, black and white photos, the ortho photos, which are all color, and then we also have some color infrared imagery. Color infrared we don't have, as you can tell, we don't have that much, but we do have it. This is a list of all the counties, and this is all the data sets that we have online, and it's available through A+. Uh, we have, you know, by year. We also have some other data that's not listed here that hasn't been georeferenced or anything, but we do have it. Uh, again, the U.S. Department of Agricultural data, if you contact us, then we can find that information and send to you also. Uh, the nice thing about this list also is each of the years are linked. So if you click on the link, you will get the index for that particular data set and it will tell you, uh, show you the coverage, show you the tiled numbers over in the title block, it will tell you the resolution, when the acquisition was taking place, what coordinate system it's in, and what the data set uh, ID is for that particular data set. Going to the older stuff, these are all basically kind of hand-drawn old maps, so the, the most that you can get is a flight line. But the biggest thing is it basically tells you the, the can tell you the scale, the year that uh, pretty much the month and the year that the imagery was taking and what coverage that uh, it occurred on. So if you want to know what we have, look at this list and that will give you a good start to, to what we have available. The so next thing, the APAC, that gives you some information about our the data that we do have. Basically there's three different categories. We have the high resolution ortho photography, the state participates with Department of Revenue uh, and several other state agencies, some of the counties and water management districts on gathering and distributing the ortho photography. Uh, generally the photography is one foot resolution. More and more as technology and storage progresses, we've gotten six inch resolution and we even have some three inch resolution. And more and more counties are doing the six inch resolution just because of the better quality. Uh, the single frame aerial photography, that's all the old film based aerial photography. Uh, none of that is geo referenced. Uh, we do have a little bit from the 70s that one of the water management districts did georeference, but 99% of it's not georeference, so you, you would just be a picture only and you'd have to georeference it yourself if you wanted to use it in a CAD or GIS environment. And then the last thing is the agricultural stabilization conservation service images that came from the USDA. Primarily these uh, 
go back from the 40s and go up to the 80s. Uh, some of the sets are not complete. Uh, there's also the University of Florida uh, Smathers Library also has some of the USDA stuff and we, we gave all our hard copy contacts to the library two years ago uh, to help fill out the rest of their data. And, uh, and usually on, if you really need to go back and do some historical stuff, uh, this USDA arrows are going to be the best source. Okay, the next thing is the aerial photo lookup system. Uh, we created this system back in 2005 as a way to uh, users to submit requests for aerial photographies in a, a more consistent manner and uh, be able to make requests you know, any time of day. And it started off as a just a request system and then in 2008 we were able to put some data out there to where users could actually download the data uh, directly, something we're very proud of and last year we came out with this new version uh, using the GIS framework the department has developed and we've got a whole new look and feel and it's so much nicer. One of the things that, first thing that I really like to stress is for internal users, DOT employees or possible contract employees, uh, when you log in, as you, uh, you see right here, you have external users and internal users. For internal users, you will use your RACAF or mainframe password. So if you do not have a mainframe password, then you will have to do the ARF and get that set up. Uh, a lot of people will have the RACF credentials, but they're out of date, so they have to reset their password. But those are that's the login that you will use, not your Active Directory login. For external users, we use the ISA, the Internet Subscriber Account, and we do that so that users can only have you know, will only need the one login credentials that they can use uh, with multiple DOT uh, applications throughout the department. To log in, uh, you can log in later. You don't have to log in right now. My preference is to log in right off the bat. And then, is if you look in the upper right hand corner. You see that your your name will be up there for external users. It will be your email address, and you have a help, which has links to the quick re uh, reference guide, also to the GeoViewer software, and a link to our email address. One thing to note is on this click here to install Microsoft Silverlight. The application does require Silverlight. They are working on changing the framework away from Silverlight since that is no longer supported. And we just found out Monday that Chrome users, Chrome has stopped the automatic use of plugins for Chrome. There is information out there on how to go back and add the plugins for Silverlight if you're using Chrome. If you're using Internet Explorer, then you will need to use Internet Explorer version 9 or newer. Uh, version 8 does not work with the application. And then for Internet Explorer 11, there is some cases where you may have to set your compatibility view to accept this application. Uh, Firefox, we have no problems with Firefox at this moment. So right now you can use Internet Explorer, Firefox, and if you go back and turn on the plugins you can use Chrome. We basically have set up this in three different uh, formats, uh, statewide, countywide, and area of interest. Statewide is basically you want the whole state. To get the whole state you will uh, require us to send us a 500 gigabit hard drive and we can put that on the hard drive for you and send it back to you. That usually takes probably three to four days for us to, to copy all that data. 
for internal users we do have the web map service base map so it's suggested that you use that base map and you can, again you can use the base map in GIS software and CAD software uh, it's uh, and actually to show you what that base map looks like uh, we have it as one of the base maps to our application you can see the performance this is the same performance that you should be getting through your CAD application or your GIS application and as you can see the quality and performance is is very very good but when you do order if you want the entire state the current data of the entire state basically this is all the data that you will get the next area is countywide data depending on how much you need at one particular time we will right now we will put two data sets out at a time on FTP for you if you want quite a bit of data then we again request that you send a hard drive in to us and we'll get that data to you again for internal users if you're looking for the latest greatest county data again we suggest that you use the uh, WMS face map basically to order aerials you can just click on a county that you want and using your standard uh, uh, Microsoft controls you can hold the control key down and click other counties and it will highlight the counties that you want and then you just request the county we have various different ways most people usually want most current we do have some people wanting like phase one environmental studies so that generally they'll want one per decade we also have all available and then if there's some other more specific if you want one particular time frame or something like that you can specify that uh, for county data again generally we'll put that on FTP so you'll put file and then FTP and then just so we kind of know how the data is being used uh, we have the various categories and if you do need to put any additional information uh, your range or uh, anything particular that you'd like for us to know you can submit those comments right there and you submit it it will send in the request to us and uh, we will email you the link to the FTP and you'll be able to download directly from FTP the next way is the area of interest and now that we're in that area I would like to go back over to the right hand side and discuss our base maps we do have the five different base maps available we have the streets which is coming from ESRI we have the US topo maps and they do change depending on the scale that you're at uh, and these are probably uh, probably could be a little outdated uh, I'm not sure how current they're keeping these uh, there's an Esri topography there is the Esri aerial base map and again as mentioned earlier we have the FDOT base map generally especially if, you know if we have the most current data out there our aerials will be the most current but there are some cases where uh, the other base map will be more current than ours uh, the other thing is we have this checkbox for the PLS up here in the top of the map and that is scale dependent and it will only call come in when the map is zoomed in because it's a very large data set and it's a little slow to load you can see the map updating at the very bottom well, we put this in because we do have requests for you know, section, township, and range. 
and this allows you to be able to look at the map through the uh, section township and range that is also available some of this information is also available on the US topo maps and you can see some of the uh, the public land, public land survey section information is on there also uh, so let's turn that back off because I say that takes quite a while to, to load that view one thing that the new version has given us is the possibility to search by address we've always been able to search by county uh, that's simple just click the county you want to and it will zoom to that county uh, we also have city we have lat long with lat long the one thing that I do want to to note with that is as you can see Latitude and longitude should be in a positive or negative decimal format. So when you enter the lat long here, you want decimal degrees. And on longitude, because longitude is west, it is actually a negative number. So like for Tallahassee, the lat is like 31 degrees, and then it's a minus 84 uh, degrees. One thing I want to note is just make sure that you do put in the minus 84 or 83, whatever it is in, for the west. Okay, here we go. So again, this shows you what kind of uh, performance hit you do have with the PLS system because it is a very large data set and it does take a while to load. Okay, there's our Dixie County. The next thing is section, township, and range. Again, you don't have to have the map on to search by township and range. This should put us in Tallahassee area, right outside of Tallahassee. And again, you do have your north, south, east, and west. Uh, the last item is address. With the address, unfortunately, right now you have to put in the address exactly like it is in the database. Billing is very crucial. I don't believe you have to have the zip code. And we now have search by address, which is going to be a big in enhancement for the application. But again, I do have to stress that you do have to be in the correct spelling and all that. Now to actually select aerials we have three different tools. We have a polygon tool which is simply just dragging a, a square. We have the uh, rectangle tool, I'm sorry. We have a polygon tool which allows you to uh, pick irregular shapes and then we also have the line tool and the line tool is a new feature that we have with A plus um, because we would get a lot of requests for corridors being a transportation agency and we had people drawing these long polygons so we added the line uh, draw command so that you could just trace along a corridor instead of having to draw some really weird polygon. Um, one thing to note, uh, when you do use the tool, and I believe this is on all of them, down here in the bottom of the screen it gives you some instructions on how to use the tool. And the big thing to note is uh, you are able to pan the map while you're still drawing. So if you're drawing a irregular polygon, you can pan the map, let go, hold the control key down, let go, and you can keep drawing. Same thing with the line command. You can trace a corridor hold the control key down, pan your map, release the control, 
and you just continue drawing is uh, control again pan, and uh, so now you have a nice line that follows the the corridor that you're looking for versus having to draw a very irregular shaped polygon. Uh, this is a tool I think was very valuable uh, and I think users would if they start using it they will in, really enjoy it a lot better. Uh, one of the big differences that you'll find, one it's easier to draw, the other thing is the number of records that it returns. Drawing a single line will return all the records that intersect that line whereas if you were come in here uh, and draw something like this, you will get a lot more aerials than you actually will really want. Uh, because especially on the older aerials, there is a lot of overlap in the aerials. And instead of maybe getting a hundred aerials, drawing this polygon like this, you may end up with 500 aerials. So uh, generally always best to try to use the line command. Okay, right now there, uh, I do have a question on the offset. There is no offset right now. It is strictly what aerials overlap the, uh, the line. Um, and again, with the older aerials, because of the overlap, you will get some redundancy. On the new stuff, there could be some cases where you just clip a corner of a tile. And uh, but again, with the, looking at the index, we can uh, actually get that back to you know get that tile to you. Um, the next thing I'd like to show you is we also have a year range. So and I'll use this as an example. You can either slide the year range or you can actually type in a number type in a number for whatever year range you want and um, and then what that does is will filter the list of aerials that you have and, um, and returns that from the archive. One thing about the year range that I would like to point out is I'll go back here and just draw a single line and if you really ramp this thing up and say you, you want the latest greatest and again remember I told you we fly the, the uh, well the state is flown in three years increment so if you pick this you'll get a warning like this that says there's no images available so the one thing I want to note is if you do get that, all you need to do is expand the year range a little bit. And when you do that, then you will pick up whatever the latest, greatest aerials are. Because um, we do get calls where people will put in a year range and then they nothing shows up on the list. And uh, you just have to broaden that out some. And let's do a quick example here. Uh, going back to doing the line, let's see if what I said was true. So using the same years, oh, actually I want to do all the years. So searching on this, it returned 342 records. But if I came back and I did the same area with a polygon, which as you see it takes a little bit more to draw the same years I get this and I didn't expect this at the moment but anyway I'm glad it popped up right now because of bandwidth file sizes uh, network traffic and whatnot we do have a threshold on how big the polygons can be if they're over four square miles you'll get the same dialog that you got for the, the uh, county and state data and you will fill out this information we'll get the request and we'll put that data out on the FTP for you but if I come in here 
but I can draw something a little bit smaller and I will get the records. So just right here just shows just this little section I'm at 192 images so that kind of does show you how much of the uh, redundancy that you will get by using polygon versus the uh, align command. So once you have your selection pick, you have the list chosen, you have the capability of showing how many records that you want to see. Uh, right here, right beside the list is very thin blue line. Uh, it's hard to see, but you, it does allow you to scroll up and down. Uh, as you can see, there's eight pages of records. Uh, in this particular case, this goes back to 1957. Uh, if you'd like to get information on, say, this particular image, over on the right-hand side, you have this little click to preview. That gives you a preview of the image. And it gives you the image name, the file size, is it black and white or color. When it says resolution 0 in A, that means it's just raw film data. And of course, that being the case, it's not going to have a coordinate system. And then it also will give you the acquisition date. Reason why we have two acquisition dates, on the old film base, it was taken one particular day. But on the new ortho photography, uh, because it is mosaic and then cut up into tiles, you may have imagery for a particular area that may uh, have multiple days. And there's no real way to tell exactly what particular day, you know, for that particular image. So what we do is we show the beginning date and the end date of when that data set was collected. Uh, it is possible to narrow that down uh, if we have the support information uh, on when the data was collected. Uh, going back here, uh, again, as you can see, there's some half foot for Leon County in 2012. Uh, again, it's color, size. Now, this being uh, orthorectified, it does have a resolution. Coordinate system unknown actually should be state plane north survey feet. And, uh, and again, the acquisition date. To download the data, you can uh, just click which images that you want after you go through the preview. And you can download those selected images. And what it'll do is bundle the all the images up into a zip file and you'll get an email with a link to the zip file. Actually, you'll get an email to the zip file and when you click on the link, it will bundle the data up in the zip file and send it to you. Uh, one thing, another thing that you can do is you can sort these columns uh, if you choose to. Uh, another feature that we have that does take a little bit of knowledge of the system, we do have a filter. So if I want to find out uh, everything that we have in this selection set that is less than 1960, I can create a filter and filter that list down to just those records. And then once I have this filtered down, up here next to name, if I check that box, that selects all the records. Uh, so that's uh, a nice feature that we've added. Uh, to clear the filter, <coughs> open up the filter uh, tool again, and you can just remove all filters. Uh, this Select all button also works for all the records. So now if you go and look at all the pages, all the records are now checked. And uh, uh, 
you can download everything and you can also just check it and unclear it. Uh, for an example, uh, just pick these three images and click download and there's my zip file. It's already downloading. So um, I guess, okay, I made a mistake on the email. I guess it just gives you the zip file directly. Um, it's on the other request that you'll get the email uh, for the larger areas or for the county or for the state. So in this particular case, it was rather quick. Uh, we only picked three images, and the three images were, you know, on the average of four megabytes. A lot of the images are 10 to 15 megabytes, so you do that times 100. It will take a little while, but it's not that bad. I would say getting the zip file was, would probably be within seconds. The download would probably be probably no more than a minute on average. And again, that's why we have it. The uh, size that you have restricted due to four square miles or smaller. Just so the uh, because of the time and the bandwidth and all that it, it takes to uh, push that much data through the system. So here's the images that I downloaded. Uh, we don't have a SID viewer on here, so I can't open that. This is the world file that I was mentioning earlier that you need to make sure that tick box is turned on in MicroStation and. Uh, and if you're not familiar with a world file, it's just a simple six-line file. Uh, the first line is the resolution. So in this case, it's one foot. And looking over here, you can see the ground sample distance is one foot. So that's one foot. The next two lines are if the image is skewed. Uh, most of the images that should be zero. Uh, the fourth line again that has to do with the resolution of the image and the fifth line is the easting for that image, the coordinate uh, easting for that image and then of course the northing for that image and then that's how the applications know how to place these images. So if you do not have the world file for the rectified or ortho rectified imagery, uh, then it's not going to come in to your map where you want to. So make sure you do have the world file for the things that have world files. Uh, so going here to one of the old images. So this one's a little bigger, it looks like. So it's taking a little bit longer to download. Uh, it's probably downloading those other three plus this new one again. Uh, yep, so it re-downloaded. Re plus you can see that particular one is 14 megabytes basically. So it took a little longer. And again, because this is an older aerial, it's just a raw uh, scan of the film. It has no world file. So I just wanted to point that out. So basically, once you do that, you can, if you still need more aerials, you can come in here and zoom to another county without ever getting out of the application. And you can continue to Search the archive, select the information you want, and uh, hopefully be able to download it. So that is basically it in a nutshell. I do have a uh, couple of questions on, uh, I guess this re refers back to MicroStation and uh, setting those units in your raster preferences. And the question is, you know, should that be survey feet? Yes and no. I haven't seen where it really made a difference. Uh, the aerials do have a accuracy of plus or minus seven feet. Uh, so I don't really think it matters whether it's in feet or survey feet.
but yeah, ideally it would be better to be in survey feet. But that's all I have. Uh, is there any questions? Contact information here again. Where this is Image Services. Our phone number is 414-4263. Again, we have Image Services email address. Again, my name is Stuart Cordy. I am the Image Services Supervisor. Um, so, okay, I got another question. Um, hopefully, I answered the microstation question. Um, the other one is the uh, web map service question. Again, the let's bring that up. So, in the AutoCAD user guide, um, here is instructions on connecting to the web map. Uh, service. Uh, you will need to contact our office to actually get the WMS address. I don't have it on my uh, on the screen here, uh, but if you do contact us, we can send you the uh, that WMS address. Which basically. Um, Again, you'll connect through WMS connection. Uh, you'll have the w, uh, WMS URL and uh, enter that information. Also, if anybody's familiar with GIS and is connected to the enterprise GIS uh, map services, the base map is part of that map service. And it is called the Florida DOT Ortho Imagery. So if you have that available, then that's the other way you can access it. Uh, I got a question to go to the University of Florida. And okay, we used to have a link. So basically, the uh, question is I had mentioned earlier about the USDA uh, agricultural, we call ASCS agricultural. Uh, stabilization conservation service images at the University of Florida uh, library. So basically if you just type in US Mathers library And down here under map and imagery, there's actually several ways you can get to it. There's aerial photography. Uh, here's their site. They do have listing by counties. You also have, there should be an application. Um, okay, down here. Uh, they have this aerial. Photography Florida application, uh, which basically is somewhat like uh, the A plus. You have a map. Um, you can zoom in. So this doesn't always work right for me. So, uh, but anyway, this is the map. I'm not sure why these tools, because you should just be able to push a point. It will return a list of the aerials that they have. Um, they don't have a, right now, I think they have maybe two decades of stuff in here. Um, and then here's you know, a list of all the, some of the different stuff that they do have. Uh, MicroStation can use WMS also. So it with a, yes, um, yes. MicroStation, you know, does have the capabilities of bringing in the WMS, and its same URL would be used in that. Well, if there's no further questions, then I will sign off for today. And I appreciate your attendance, and I hope you learned. Uh, some valuable information, and if again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, we're here to help anytime, and uh, look forward to getting you air photography. Thank you very much.